Okay, so I think we can begin now. I'm sure you can all see my screen <coughs> from <coughs> your various ends. Okay, like I said, it will not be a very lengthy lecture. Now, last week, we ended off at a point where we mentioned um, that there are issues when it comes to agricultural statistics within the developing world countries, okay? And um, mainly because of um, uh, first issues of um, uh, lack of knowledge, the resource personnel, or lack of statistical, okay, know-how to actually take the required or current uh, statistics, okay, within the agricultural sector. Then again, we did mention that we also have a different perspective from government um, uh, people, okay, in charge of agricultural statistics. And sometimes they are not too interested in um, computing certain indices or certain measures, okay, within the agricultural sector. Then again, we did mention that um, we had, I mean, shortage in terms of um, uh, field experts, even to go and um, uh, take data from the field for us, okay? So it comes along with a lot of gaps in our agricultural sector. And uh, we are saying that there has been some efforts. Um, I think um, the first um, survey was conducted somewhere in um, 2018, where there was an attempt in Ghana here to conduct the first um, agricultural census, okay? Uh, to know exactly the lands we have and um, to know the, the farm borders of those various lands in our, our borders or our country. So some as, um, efforts have been made, challenges, particularly when it comes to taking agricultural um, statistics on the ground, which leads us to a number of subjective um, techniques being employed, okay, to judge estimations in terms of the quantity we produce, in terms of the lands, uh, the agrarian lands okay, being cultivated, um, in terms of the number of workers on our various fields, in terms of the devices, the technologies, I mean, the tools that are being employed on our various farms. A lot of these things are just based on subjective, okay? methods like we said in class last week we can have high estimation you just look at it and say okay because uh, uh when you go to every uh, farm we should have about 30 workers on this size of uh, of land we are just thinking that if you have this number of um, lands or this size of land there, there should be roughly 300 workers on them Okay, these are not accurate. Mm -hmm. Good. And the same thing will go with the farming side, land size. The same thing goes with the, the yield estimate. So there are a lot of um, subjective methods that have been employed, but there have been some degree of objective methods also, because we know of, um, okay, government purchasing uh, uh, maize, corn from, um, from, um, or let me even say the cocoa seeds from uh, cocoa farmers, okay? Yeah, there are some uh, accurate measurement, or let me say some degree of objective techniques which have been used to uh, measure, okay, this um, cocoa seeds and uh, other materials from cocoa, okay? Uh, but same cannot be said for other um, products from the agricultural sector or even from the same crop sector, okay? Uh, except for those um, uh, cash products like cocoa and coffee, 
uh, we, we do not have uh, very objective methods for other uh, crops, okay? And even for the cocoa and the coffee, I mean, there are some degree of subjective measurements in terms of the farming land, the workers, the tools employed, etc. Okay, but for the yield, uh, there has been significant uh, progress toward measurement of um, the, I mean, post harvest yield. Okay, good, not pre harvest, post harvest yield. That's what we are saying. So that there are certainly shortages or gaps, okay, in relation to taking the statistics. Now we are saying that in today's class, I just say that um, there is need to develop agricultural statistics everywhere. It's not only that we have such problems, but everywhere there are issues with agricultural statistics. And uh basically because statistics needs to be improved or okay and uh, like we have said the tastes the i mean choices of people vary from time to time which means that crops that have been produced from time to time to have been changed which essentially also means that statistics will over the years or over the decades need to be revised okay and techniques needs to be revised uh, so everywhere as long as we are producing some agricultural products, the need to be what some upgrade, <coughs> some upgrades <coughs> or changes, okay, in the techniques which are being employed to take uh, agricultural statistics. Okay, good. Now, um, yeah, so we said that it may be act why we why stress is placed on the replacement of some of the subjective methods by objective methods. And we say that besides the normal merits of objective methods over subjective, over subjective methods, uh, subjective methods give rise to very serious errors when it comes to the developing country context, okay? the arises of very serious errors uh, when you use, especially when you are having uh, maybe cocoa seeds and you want to use a subjective method that, okay, because it's a, a one sack of rice, uh, we estimate that this is the kind of yield within one sack of rice. In fact, you'll be making a very terrible error, okay? Because in that way, is it that you're going to cheat the cheat the buyer? Well, the buyer will never never allow you to cheat him, but he will be very interested. You you make use of a subjective method so that he can end up cheating you, okay, to make more profit from you. So it's very 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 important to use an objective method. If it's two kilograms, it's two kilograms, and you know you are selling two kilogram of a cocoa seeds. Uh, very very important but if we employ subjective techniques in those areas then it really affects what uh, us as a developing countries okay and uh, again that also brings to four uh, you remember some few lectures ago i did mention that our total area for farming crop farming okay is equivalent more or less equivalent to the total area in india but we are importing rice and a lot of grains from india and they are an exporting country in terms of uh, uh, they are an agri country okay they export a lot of agricultural products so what are we not doing right uh, and when you compare our statistics with uh, the statistics in india they've gone far 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 ahead because to a very large extent, they know all the farming lands, who is farm, farming what at what point in time, what techniques are they using. They are able to predict their yield in the farm, even before they, they harvest, okay? They, they know exactly, in fact, they have storage facilities. They know exactly where they are going to store, where, which is going where, okay? So there is reduction of losses significant losses at all stages in the process of what? Production, 
from growth of the plant all the way to harvest to storage to export and uh, resources that are i mean obtained from agricultural products are all monitored okay whereas in the case of Ghana, it is not so we are only interested in what do we have at the end of the day post harvest and then how much are we exporting and how much are we getting but nobody is interested in looking at it from the grassroots so this plant that is growing how much can it generate for us can we forecast the yield okay what interventions can we put in place to make sure we get the maximum the optimum yield out of the plants so as to get the optimum yield in total from the farms uh, from the villages from the districts from the ridges and which will also accumulate to a national yield mm? good no we, we are sometimes not interested in that we are rather interested in the yield from the districts gets to regional data then we go to regional data total yield we export everything and then get our export total data but we are not looking at the nitty gritties and trying to use employ mathematical uh, scientific techniques to improve upon yield improve upon workers and run estimations to know exactly what we need and what is i mean falling short within our agricultural sector okay another point is made here it says many small stakeholders and lack sufficient education give me a minute let me just project so we are saying that most farmers lack sufficient education and knowledge to report on their agricultural practices and products okay and it will be necessary the state provides what uh, officers to assist them or to even collect data from the field mm -hmm. so if you ask them to provide you information on what is happening in their farms accurate information you will not get it unless the state employs somebody who is an expert or who has a i mean yeah the expertise in that area okay to go out there run the measurements to know exactly what quantities we have there instead of using subjective techniques to for analysis and for i mean overall calculations cool let me move on. Right. Yeah, so um, let me move on. I think I've touched on this. Yeah, okay, let me touch on the very first point. So we are saying that even though subjective methods need to be replaced with what? Objective methods. It's not always possible to replace all of those uh, subjective methods, okay? So for example, um, we are saying that data on prices and some items on the cost of production and food consumptions, okay? It may be very difficult to know the exact cost of production of some food items until you purchase, let's say, a quantity of um, uh, a certain quantity of, say, kenke. Uh, it will be difficult for the farmer or for the producer of that um, um, item to tell you uh, how much. <laughs> the actual quantities that went into the KK, okay, will cost. Eh? The only cost you can have is you have measured 50 gram of KK and this is the price of it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to purchase those materials or those uh, farm items to know the exact cost of it. Eh? That is the method that the statistical service uses when it comes to consumption prices once they get to the market you can't just get out there and um, ask the market women to give you the prices of their food stuff 
<laughs> sometimes when <laughs> anyway though uh they've been pre-informed and um it's it's a selected market and they are aware that from month after month statistical service will be coming sometimes you may get to uh the same vendor and uh you want to buy something but that you want to find out the price of something but on that particular day nothing has been bought okay so you don't want to be coming in and asking people what are the prices they may end up misleading you so if you really want the actual price they have a, a standard measure okay so they they, they, will, they will, let's say for example rice eh? we have standard measurements so once we put a kilo down eh? the kilogram down you fetch rice to a, a tune of one kilogram then you ask okay how much is this the market woman tells you okay this is going to cost about 20 or 30 ghana city and then you pick your kilo away, pay the person. So then you have accurate statistics that one kilogram of rice is going to cost this particular amount. Okay, good. But if you don't do things that way, if you don't buy some of the farm products, it becomes what? Very difficult to know the exact price of it. Then uh, having said this, it's very easy thinking that uh, buying a buying, uh, the farm product and getting the prices is an easy procedure. But you see, we are talking about over 300 items which you need to what, get, okay, to even get your, we are, in the case of the Ghana Statistics Service, we are just talking about CPI, Consumer Price Index, just one index, one statistic. You get it. So to produce just a CPI, you can imagine going to buy over 300 items before you produce your CPI. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very expensive. Again, the worker who is going around the various farms, you, you need to fuel, uh, you need to pay for all the transportation. You have to, I mean, pay this worker. And then you also have to purchase items just to produce what? Consumer price index. That is one index on agricultural products. Yeah, so it's, it becomes quite expensive when you look at it as a whole. This is just one index, one statistic on agricultural products. So it becomes quite expensive also when we are producing agricultural statistics in, uh, in developing countries. The more reason why agricultural surveys are uh, sometimes very difficult. Okay, now moving on, <coughs> when we talk about agricultural statistics, what are we talking about? We are saying that there are different, different, different statistics, okay? But basically, FAO classifies um, 10 main statistics, okay? Areas, let me put it, areas of computation, eh? statistics under various areas, which captured once we are capturing or we are talking about statistics in every country, okay? And these 10 areas, the first one is the number of agricultural holdings and their principal characteristics, okay? So we want to, when we talk about agricultural holdings, where are the farmlands and who, who owns the farmland? That is what we mean, okay? Then if we are talking about who owns the farmlands, then we also have to talk about, first of all, what is the size of the, the land, okay? Uh, what is the form of the tenor? Is it a rented land? Is it a family land? I mean, belongs to the people forever. Uh, what type of utilization? You understand? Are we using it for cocoa production? Are we using it for temporal crop and if temporal crop what kind of crop is it horticultural where we are looking at vegetables and all that then uh, yeah so these are the things we talk about when it comes to number of crop holdings so we need statistics in these various areas okay all under agricultural holding that is the first categorization then the second categorization is the area under crops 
and the volume of principal crops. Okay, good. So when we talk about the area under the crops, we are looking at the total area being what cultivated. Mm? The, the, so what land? Uh, let me let me put it in a very simple listen. So you may have about um, uh, sixty acres of land, okay? But the sixty acres of land may be mixed cropping. You may have about 40 for corn, 20 for, uh, 20 for cocoa, and uh, that is it. So 40 and 20 for cocoa, okay? So I want to know what is the area for cocoa? How much of this are you cultivating this season? Uh -huh. That is the second one. So that we are always updated on year to year basis on the total area. Okay, which we are using for what? For production of the We talk about uh, cattle and the volume. I don't think we have a very basic on the volume of production of livestock, except probably uh, we export. If there is any exportation, then we have statistics on that. But aside that, we don't have statistics in this area. But FAO admonishes that we also get statistics here so that we can monitor how, okay, we are progressing in this area uh, of agriculture. Then we also talk about employment in agriculture. Yeah? Employment in agriculture is a very, very important, okay? And uh, even though we don't have, um, let's say, regular agricultural service and um, sensors to sensors okay captures this because it, it becomes an issue also to them in the sense that when you come to developing countries like ghana a lot of the workers on our farms are are children who are supposed to be in the school going age so that also becomes a concern to the country who is out there working on the farm are they supposed to be in schools? How much are they being paid? Okay, so these are all statistics and the employment in agriculture, which we have. How many people are working on what size of, of farm? Okay, are we under utilizing our human resources? These are things we need to look at. Okay, good. Then point five, you need to talk about what farm population. Mm -hmm. I think it comes is related to employment. So the entire farm population, how many people are out on the farm working? Okay, that will come down to efficiency of productivity within farm. Then we also have agricultural power machinery that are being used, general transport facilities facilities. Then point seven, we have irrigation and drainage. Okay, what systems of drainage have been employed? We need to know that because it affects our yields within the country. Point eight, use of fertilizer and soil dressings. Okay, I think that is very clear to us. Supply of fertilizers, what type of fertilizers are being used? How are they being purchased? How is it being supplied to you? farmers we need to know all that because it's a major 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 factor in production then we also need statistics on wood uh, fisheries products obtained from agricultural holdings very important timber lumber okay we've had um, recent issues on a uh, rose wood okay and uh -huh. we realize that it is becoming extinct within what uh, globally Okay, so there have been serious, serious, serious laws banning the cutting down of rose root. So we need statistics in this area, else we will end up cutting our wood. And by the time you realize some plants are extinct in the world, we will not find them again, even to, to plant them. The same thing goes with the fisheries. If we don't take time, some fishes will be eradicated from the world and we'll never see them again, okay? When you watch documentaries, <laughs> I remember some time back, um, 
watched I was watching a documentary on how the deep sea farming was affecting and deep sea, not only deep sea farming but deep sea farming and the, the global changes was even affecting the cora uh, when we talk about the cora we mean the plants and those animal uh, deep okay which forms the covering for the the sea itself uh, good they are also very relevant toward the survival of the fish systems coral dies out then it means that our fishes are dying out and we are going to have a problem so we we need statistics you see we don't even have information on this coral in our country we don't even have information on our fisheries it's just recently that we are very interested and uh, we have to come in with some policies uh, to prevent the farmers from fishing in certain periods of the year but even that one to who is coming with a lot of political matters okay good then point 10 we need to start with agriculture is associated with other industries very important so how is the agricultural sector feeding into our industries okay <coughs> what materials are they producing <coughs> how much are they producing and how relevant it is to the entire country so these are the 10 areas uh, in which fao requires that we produce statistics on so any statistics in these areas are always very relevant and countries need to meet these targets uh, to get statistics covering these various areas that gives us a true reflection of how agricultural statistics okay is running within the country now moving on um these are key things we need to uh, talk about um, some key definitions now i did mention that um, there are two uh, main types of crops i did mention the other day and i explained to you we have temporal crops we have permanent crops permanent crops like coconuts okay like palm tree which grow for many years then we also have um, temporal crops like the ones we always harvest okay from time to time good now we are saying that agricultural production uh, tempera of temporary and permanent crops as well as that of livestock and um, livestock products are all part of agricultural production okay good now in um, estimation of crop production here we, we are focusing on crop production, okay? So in the previous slide, we said we need statistics on various aspects, including livestock. But in this slide, we are coming down to crop production, statistics on crop production itself, okay? <coughs> and for this lecture and the next two to three lectures, which we'll be holding in class, our focus will be on crop production how do we obtain the statistics for crop production good and we are saying that there are two main areas when it comes to the area of crop production which are of interest to us okay the first area is the area of um or is statistics on the area that is being cropped the area that is being cropped. So when I say area that is being cropped, I mean the cultivation area, uh, not necessarily the size of the farm, because the, the farm might be 60 hectares, but you are farming on only 30 hectares. Okay, so we are interested in the area that is being farmed on. Good, that's the first point. And then the second point is, what is the yield rate from the farm okay the yield rate yield rate is different from the yield you understand the yield rate is different from the yield. we are looking at the yield per the farm or the the yield within a particular so it can be rates in terms of the land cultivated and rate in terms of the time okay 
but usually here we took at the rate in terms of the 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 farmland which was cultivated so let's say kojo has um, a farmland of uh, 30 acres of land produce 300 kilograms of maize ama also has 30 kilogram 30 acres of land produce 500 kilograms of maize you see the rates in Amas farm is going to be higher. It means that they are producing more, giving same what land size. So there will be need for further what um, studies or further investigations to know what methods have been employed. Okay, on Amas farm, why is this so? Okay, so that we see best practices to improve others. So we are always interested in statistic we talk about the yield rates okay and having mentioned yield rates from my explanation the rate comes with the yield and the area so if you don't get the area you don't you cannot estimate the yield rate you can estimate yield but you cannot estimate yield rate uh -huh. yield is a quantity of food that is produced or crop product that is produced okay but then is with respect to the area on which it was what cropped or produced good and this goes for both temporary crops and permanent crops and the way in which these estimations are done are different because permanent crops remain on the same land for so many years so how do you uh, do the calculation you understand good is this is going to be the same land on which coconut has been but within a period of time how much coconut were generated okay on that same piece of land uh -huh. as temporary crops is going to be different then um we're also saying that when it comes to agricultural planning statistics which we earlier mentioned on land utilization irrigations okay fertilizers marketing intelligent cost of production and all that are very important okay in agricultural planning good now let's move on now um i think this should have come before sampling good so let me skip that i'll come back to that slide now we are saying that in general i made a point from the beginning that all countries at a point in time have some gaps in their statistics which have been taken because every country, okay, you, you cannot put all the countries at the same level. Uh, India is far, far ahead of us. Germany is far, far ahead. So <clears throat> we have different levels and each country needs to improve. So based on the level at which you are you have to adapt some methods some techniques to improve upon the statistics you have at hand now we are saying that um, collection of statistics in areas um, okay let me just read this point it's important you say the development of statistics may be considered as consisting of improving the methods of collection of existing statistics for greater uh, dependability okay so that's the first point if we are talking about developing statistics then we are also looking at developing methods of collecting statistics okay and then point two collecting statistics in area where there is none so there are some areas where statistics are not being taken so for example do we have statistics on the let me say prior to your harvests okay what is the sizes the average sizes of um, let's say corn or the average sizes of watermelon um yes of the plant itself we look at the statistics of the plant they start fruiting if we're able to get statistics on this then we're also able to run 
you see, we as statisticians and mathematicians should be able to run some correlation analysis to tell whether there is going to be a high yield, okay? The size of the yield itself, we should be able to predict it as mathematicians. Uh -huh. But because this data is not available, if you try going out there to run any kind of uh, modeling or analysis, it's going to be difficult because nobody is taking that data, okay? So you'll be limited to the data that is available. You may you are forced to use the data that is available from the various ministries and various offices. So we need the data in areas where there is no data, so as to fill gaps in existing data. Good. So development of statistics looks at what improving upon methods, existing methods, and also taking data where there is none. Now moving on. <clears throat> We've talked about, uh, okay, so here yeah, let me just talk about this point. We are saying that, so if we're talking about uh, development of statistics, then basically they are in three stages. The first point is, um, okay, let me, let me come, it says countries in developing world are are in different what, stages of improving their statistics, okay? Some countries are still using <coughs> suggestive methods, <coughs> whilst others are using a combination of suggestive and objective methods, okay? The distribution of the two methods depending on statistical environment of the country concerned, right? Then we have, we could, that broadly think of the development in three stages. One, mainly using suggestive methods of collection. So in some countries, we do not have, <coughs> I mean, objective methods in estimating crop yields and various aspects of agricultural farming. In state two, we can say that there are some areas where we have a lot of suggestive methods with some level of objective techniques being employed. Then we also have our state three, where we have a lot of objective methods. And this state three guys are places where we have uh, much developed okay, countries. Like in Germany, you have statistics on virtually everything. Scientists who are checking everything on the farm, okay? Um, in India, we still have some subjective methods being employed, but a lot are objective methods. So we can say that India is still in state two, okay? Uh, well, Ghana, we, we can say that we are at the infantile stages of um, state two, okay? Because we still have some, some statistics, we have some statistics, but uh, how much of them do we have, okay? There are a lot of gaps which needs to be improved. Now, um, having said that, I will pass on this slide to you for you to know, because these are things that you need on the field as a statistician. So if you're employed as a statistician in the agricultural field, what do we do when there is no, somebody is at stage one? That is where only suggestive methods are being used, okay? Now, there are priorities you need to give to yourself. And these are some of the points I've enumerated here, okay? So if there is no data available, then it means that you need personnel, trained personnel in that area, okay? To help you to take some data, especially in the land being cultivated, Okay, who owns the land, what are being cultivated, okay, within the and over the suggestive methods will be relevant because you need an idea. If there is no information, then you may start with what suggestive techniques. Okay, but let field experts who have the knowledge go out there to collect the data. So you may have to sacrifice some money, okay, to get people out there to take the data for you. That is for stage one. When people are state two, you because you now have state two means you've taken 
you've gone past stage one. So you have an idea of what is happening on the ground. Rough estimates, okay, of the, the total land size, <coughs> the farmers, etc. So this time around, you have to sit down and prioritize, okay? You have to prioritize. Uh, I have little resources as a developing country. Now I need some statistics. Which ones are going to be very relevant to me as a country? Okay, then you decide. And in doing so, you see, usually we are interested for us as developing countries, the reality is we are interested in how much are we producing? Okay, that, that is the first priority. But uh, somebody will tell you hey, how much you are producing is also dependent on the process. So if you produce, yesterday I was listening to a discussion on um, TV, okay? Where the man was talking about post-harvest losses, okay? So if you are producing close to 1,000, and he did mention specifically that we lose about 10% of our corn yield, okay, in post harvest losses. So if you are producing uh, 1,000, okay, kilograms of, of corn, and then through the process of processing it or storing it, once you pick it from the farm, threshing it, you lose about 10%. 10% mm? basically means if you harvested, let's say you took, 100 uh, corn, you broke 100 corn spots from the tree. Then at the end of the day, you let 10 drop on the floor. Okay. And it's gone. You only have 90 left. And this 10 can make a lot on the national level. So what we are saying is, even though all these things are important, currently, or the situation on the ground is we are usually interested in the in the yield, okay? And when it comes to the yield, our priority is also or should be on the yield rate because it's not just about yield. If you are just going to talk about yield, 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 you realize there will be a lot a lot of gaps, okay, in uh, your competition. Where is the gap coming from? You realize that somebody producing corn in Accra would be yielding differently from somebody producing corn in the Eastern region and someone producing corn in the Western region. So if as a serious country, if we are really interested in optimizing our corn yield, then we later will want to find out what is causing accounting for the different rates, okay? Instead of the yield, the rates. So if, Let's say in Accra, the total land size is uh, maybe 200 kilometers, uh, kilometers square. And we are producing 5,000. And you go to Eastern region and we have 200 kilometers squared land. It's still, it's giving us about 15,000. We, we need to investigate, okay? Is it the farming techniques or is it the area, okay? within which we are farming, that is giving us a high. If it is so, the measures should be put in place to optimize the process. Either we, we are going to do all corn farming, okay, in the Eastern region, like it's done, okay? All rice farming is done somewhere, India and China, that is what, what they do, okay? So if Eastern region is going to give us optimal use for our corn, then let's move everything there. You, you get it. Uh -huh. So our yield rates are important to us than just the yield. I mean, just getting the yield, the yield doesn't really make, I mean, much. We will be losing a lot. We'll be losing a lot in terms of how much are we losing after even production, uh, after yield, how much are we losing? Uh, Post-harvest losses, processing losses and all that. We, we need to have indicators which will measure this one. But in the first place, like we are saying, because we are developing the statistics, yield rate becomes important to us. And then what you have to do first 
is you have to, uh, because you are allocating resources, okay, in producing the yield rate, means that you have to get experts, uh, field experts to go out there to the field to examine exactly how much is being produced from the field. You understand? And in doing so, in fact, you need two statistics. You need the, the accurate statistics on the area, and you also need statistics on the yield. But it, it becomes practically, when you go to the ground, it becomes difficult to measure the exact area as well, okay? The exact area may require a GPS approach, okay, to get the exact land size for some farms. So that will be quite expensive. So which means that you need to prioritize and in terms of crop production, give priority, <coughs> priority to <coughs> the yield that is being generated in the farm. And then pro probably you may, uh, I mean, subscribe to a more subjective approach from the field aspects, okay, in terms of the area. That is one way you can go about it. Another way you can go about it is the field experts might do a rough estimation, okay? There are ways of uh, very uh, less expensive ways of trying to find a rough estimate of the area, which may not be necessarily eye judging method. You can put triangles at the various edges of the farm, okay? And then put a, a, a line. Mm -hmm. just put a, a rope around, okay, the farm. Then you may do some computation. Eh? As mathematician, you can just compute the, uh, an estimate of what? The total area of the farm. That is an in inexpensive method of doing that. But you see, it's a slow. Uh -huh. It is quite slow. You need people who are experts in computing the area to do that. But still in the absence of what accurate data, those methods have to be employed. Then we also say that if there is a case, like in the case of um, uh, production or processing of um, materials from the, the farmlands, if you have a more organized sector compared to a less organized sector, you see, the organized sector, it may be private. Uh, they will naturally be taking data on the number of eggs they are producing, the number of crops they are producing. Uh, I mean, yeah, the quantities um, and so on and so forth. How much they are exporting, how much they are selling and all that. So as a government or as a station employed in the government sector, you want to focus your resources, okay, on the non-organized sector. You want to, to understand, get some accurate statistics on them, okay? Rather than trying to waste resources on a sector that is already organized. They are organized in terms of taking some data in their area, okay? So you concentrate more attention in getting information okay, accurate information from the non-organized sector. Okay, so if you are going to sample or you are going to um, allocate resources to get corn yield or uh, harvest from those farms, focus your attention on what? On the non-organized farmers. Go to those small scale farmers, those villages, where they do not really have real people to take data at various stages of uh, crop production for them. So, which means that priorities need to be made, okay, at every point in time. If we are developing our statistics as statisticians, okay, priorities certainly need to be made. At one point in time, you may have to decide where I'm going to take my objective statistics as compared to the subjective, okay? And then what, okay, to take the objective method or as compared to what the 
uh, sedative method. Okay, this also talks, the next point talks about what? Funding of staff, okay, to produce the objective method. Now, in the third stage, in the more advanced countries or those who are very advanced, there is nothing more to do. Once you have a lot of um, um, objective methods, what we can do is to go further and use more scientific methods, okay, in trying to predict uh, our output. Then somebody might ask, why do we have to go through all these things? At the end of the day, is it not just planting the crop and getting your yield and getting your food? No, it is not so. Uh, how can you also plant and then lose half of what you are planting? Yes. Somebody will say, well, I'll just be careful. Careful in what sense? If you don't have data to be able to tell, okay, within June, July season, we are going to have an outbreak. It's likely we can have an outbreak of our, um, army worms. Okay, or we are going to have uh, changes in weather patterns, so rainfall may not be um, constant. So we need for you to put in necessary measures. At the end of the day, you plant and you realize that you have wasted your effort. You may not even realize enough money to pay your workers. You see, so this is what we are saying. If indeed we are serious about, uh, I mean, agriculture, then we need data at various stages. And these data don't just come. You have to develop them from one level to the other. Okay, if they are not available, start with some suggestive methods from expert, expert point of view. Then record those data. Let make it make it a point to have it recorded. Okay, so that it becomes a national information. Then we build on that from one stage to the next stage. Uh, then once we get to a very final stage, which we are not there yet, we can be doing more scientific approaches. So you can pick, say, a farm. Uh, get some sensors to be measuring the crops, know exactly what is happening. Mm? In some farms in China, in Japan, in, um, in Germany, okay, you even have sensors in the ground checking the humidity level in, in the soil, okay, and then they determine when irrigation should be done. Nobody goes there to water. You see, and you don't water the farm when there is no need. All of these things are remote controlled because the computers have been programmed to know that when the size of the farm is like this or humidity level is at this level, this is what will happen. So, I mean, ABCD must be done. And by the time they finish, they have a very small farmland, but they would have produced over 10 times and 20 times more than you with a bigger uh, farm size. Okay, so this are very important, helping us to develop statistics and then how to go about them from step to step is very important. Now, the next point I'm going to touch on will be uh, data collection teams, okay? How we actually collect data, okay, from various surveys in the agricultural sector. But, um, I, I, I know as statisticians, we've all done something on uh, data collection, okay, and the data collection methods. And like I said, what you do for me is you go and do some reading. I'll touch on some few points, but I don't intend to take you through those techniques. You know them already. So I'll give you the slides, you go and do further reading, and then I'll give you a follow-up on assignment to ensure that you read. Eh? a follow-up assignment to make sure that you read before you come to class next week. Maybe um, next week's class, we should have a presentation on data collection methods. Th these are things you know. So once we have a presentation, it shouldn't be a problem. So course, I'll work with you. We'll have to group them, <coughs> the class into, um, let's have five groups or five or six group. We are 18 or so 22 in all. So we'll group in five or six groups. Then we'll look at the data collection methods. Once we get to class, everybody will come and present 
before we continue the class. Now, before we do that, let me touch on these keywords. When we talk about sample sampling design or sample design, okay, we say in sample studies, we have to make plans regarding the size of the sample, the selection of the sample, collection of the sample data, and preparation of the final results based on the sample study. The whole procedure, okay, procedure involved is referred to as what sample design. So when we talk about sample design, we are talking about what, how, what is the size, sample size? Where are we selecting the sample size from? How are we going to select it? Okay. And then how do we prepare our results using the various samples that we have collected? Then the next thing is a sampling frame. The sampling frame is the, the list of all units in the population. Okay. With that particular characteristic. So let me read everything then I explain. So it says a unit of population is a relative term. The sampling frame contains all the units of the population. It is to be defined clearly as to which unit to be included in the frame. Okay. So if we are talking about cocoa farmers, not all farmers are cocoa farmers. So if you are designing a sampling frame for cocoa farmers, make sure you don't include farmers who are not cocoa farmers, even though they may all be cocoa farmers, uh, even though they may all be farmers, not all farmers are cocoa farmers. So you need the exact list of farmers in cocoa farming, okay? But of course, you and I know that there are challenges when it comes to this, okay? Because a lot of our methods are suggestive um, techniques, okay? We do not have exact figures on all cocoa holdings. We do not have exact figures on all mix holdings. We don't have exact, I mean, figures on the holdings of the various agricultural lands. Good. But this is what the sampling frame is to get a list of all members holding those farms. And sometimes, sometimes because you may not get the exact farms and their, uh, their location, eh? we don't, we don't, I don't think we have those, we don't have them. It is now that we are introducing the GPS, okay, to take measurements of even our households. But I'm sure eventually once GPS is in the system, we should have location of farms. Okay, within the country. So once we get there, then we can have a complete list of all farms. But as it stands now, for this country, we more or less depend on what the, the farmers themselves, the holders of the farm. So if it is farm A, we refer to farm A using what the owner of farm A. You understand? So it is the farm A owner who will tell you the size of his land. And if he gets this wrong, then it means that the size of the land you have as your national record is also going to be wrong. Okay. Now, this is just a summary of the sampling methods I expect you to, <coughs> to read on. And uh, there are basically six. That's why I said we are going to put ourselves into six groups. I'll, um, employ the course reps to pull you into these six groups, okay? And um, let me know when you are done. So next week, group one is taking the first, group two is taking second, group three is third, and um, it's, it follows accordingly, okay? You are just going to talk about this sample, sampling techniques, and um, try and link them. Maybe let me push you to do some reading ahead of the class. Read, uh, read on how they can be applied in the agricultural sector. 
okay, before we come to class, God willing, next week. Yeah, on that note, I'll bring to a pause, okay, my presentation here and take some few questions from the class, if there are any.